No, thank you. I'm so happy to be here, honestly. And don't worry about calling me Sammy. I've had many people. I have different names. People call me Cece. Sometimes they like calling me Sammy. Then they like to call me Cece Sammy Lightfoot. <laughs> many things, and I love it all. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, do you know what? I'm ex so excited because all of you that I'm going to be speaking to today, I want to start by saying that anything is possible with our dreams in the creative world, absolutely. I want to tell you a little bit about how I got into the industry, into the music and TV industry, and hopefully that will help. And I want to hear all of any questions that you have afterwards. When I was younger, much younger, I shall not give my age away, <laughs> but as a child, I was very passionate when I saw a man, I was sitting down at home watching television and I saw someone playing the piano through the TV and he was very sort of big in what he did. Fabulous clothes, the grand piano, you name it, there it was. And that inspired me. And I decided, I said to my mother, that's what I want to do. And one thing turned out to the next. And I just studied constantly about how to play classical piano. But then when I was 17, I happened to be somewhere where I was playing the piano and singing and some people approached me and they said, we love your voice. We'd like you to audition for something. One thing led to another. And my first job in the industry was with a woman called Diana Ross. Now, I don't know how many of you know about this lady, but she is an amazing, well-known singer. And I started off as a backing singer for her. But I was so young, I had no idea at that time really what I was doing. I had lots of questions, <laughs> and but I learned along the way. And I want to stop there and just say that to you. For all of you listening, everything starts and you will have lots of questions and that's OK. That was me. I was 17. Many people doing the backing vocals were in their 40s, but there I was so young sort of what do I do? I was so nervous, but I loved doing it. So I was a backing vocalist. I then worked with many other people, Julio Iglesias, many other well-known singers. But as I was that young, I continued learning. So I started to study about the human voice. By doing that, I ended up becoming a vocal coach. Now, when I started as a vocal coach, I started as an assistant working with other people. And one thing led to another because I studied constantly about how the voice worked, etc. I then had an amazing job where I worked with, there was a band or is a band, they're about to re reunite, a band called S Club 7. So I worked with them. I was their main vocal coach. With them, I worked on every tour that they did and I loved doing it. One thing led to another. I worked with many other well-known artists and then music television, music competition television shows merged up and did very well. So I started working on programs from Pop Idol that turned into X Factor, into The Voice, and my business started to build. When my business built, I had it in London, but a lot of these television shows ended up going to America. So I ended up having a business in Los Angeles as well. So I started, like I said, as a backing singer. Then I became a vocal coach. That was a vocal coach with a business in London, then in Los Angeles. And I love what I do. I've been doing it for many, many years. And after doing that for so many years, it's now very, I'm very passionate about speaking to people like yourselves. You are the generation of tomorrow. Many of you, some of you might end up being a vocal coach like myself, or you might end up being a singer on stage constantly, or you might end up being a manager, or you might end up being a songwriter. There are so many things that you can do in the industry. And that's how it sort of evolved in my own life. I started off with a small dream that became a bigger dream that became a bigger dream. And I learned that it's so important to keep educating ourselves in whatever area that we want to be in. And that's what I did. And I'm still doing it. I still learn 
on a daily basis. Part of what I'd like to do today in our conversations is for you to do some exercises that I can do that I work with many people in the industry. I'll bring it back. Like I said, a lot of the music competition shows that I have worked on, when I start working on those shows, there are people that come in and they have to audition. Now, when they audition, many of them are nervous and many of them become well-known singers and other areas within the creative world. But I want to tell you the one thing that I say to them all the time. It's important to start with doing vocal exercises. The reason why these vocal exercises are so important is it gives us that confidence in ourselves as people. Now, this is something that I always believed in doing, and I believe it even more so now. And the reason I believe that these vocal exercises are important is because, like I said, for I've been in the industry for about 27 years. I shall not give my age away, <laughs> but it's 27 years that I've been working in the music industry. And in doing that, I have found that warming up my voice on a daily basis has given me that courage. But then I believe it even more so because about 10 years ago, when my daughter was born, I have two children, but when my daughter was born, I had a near death experience and I couldn't speak, I couldn't talk. But do you know what? The vocal exercises is what then helped me in my recovery. Now, I won't go into too much detail about that, but I really want you to understand this. The reason why it's important to do these vocal exercises, for many of you, you might have exams coming up or you might be trying to figure out what do I do when I leave school? What do I do if I want to be in the music world? Where do I know to start? The first place to start for all of you will be the vocal exercises. The vocal exercises gives you that confidence, it gives you that strength, and even when we have those low moments, if something happens, which is what happened to me when I had that near-death experience, the vocal exercises helped me to recover. It covers every aspect of life. So I'll just repeat that. How I got in, my biog, so to speak, is I started off as a backing singer when I was 17 years old. Some of you might be 17 years old. I started at that age. In my early 20s, I then started to be a vocal coach. But why was that? Was it because I was so good? I, I am good, <laughs> but I don't think it's only because of that. I think it's because I spent so much time studying about the human voice so that I could teach. I was able to give examples to singers. I was able to give examples to musicians because I play the piano. I was able to project when I was speaking and that's how I then ended up being on television programs. So as well as being a backing singer, a vocal coach, I ended up doing television programs where they would say, we'd like to interview you for something or we'd like you to present a show or have the opening words before something else happens. And I love that side. I've been able to do many aspects within the creative world and then ending up in the business world where I built a business in two different territories. So again, I want to say this to all of you. These are exercises that you can all learn. You don't have to know exactly where you want to end up. But once you have a dream, that dream can be a start. Now, moving on, I'd like to start doing some exercises, if that's OK, because I, I, I'd love for you to remember, you know, not just my story, but I'd like you to start your story. So if you stand up or sit where you are, as I'm sitting, have your feet firmly on the floor. And I want you to take a breath in through your nose, and then breathing out, doing an exercise. 
Now, as we do this, please excuse me because I have a bit of a cold at the moment. <laughs> and if any of you have a cold, this is actually really good because doing the exercises is important, even if you have a cold. So we'll take a breath in. I'll move to the side so you can see I'm breathing through my nose. And then I'm, I'm doing a hiss sound. Now, as you're doing it, I want you to think of a balloon. If you blow into a balloon, it gets bigger and then it gets smaller. It's the same when you're doing these breathing exercises. You are taking the breath in and then when you're hissing out, you're going to end up losing the air. So just do that. I will count to four when you're breathing out. So I'll say breathe in and breathe out. One, two, three, four. That's it. OK, so let's all do that together now. Breathing in through the nose and out. One, two, three, four. That's good. Now relax. Relax your shoulders, relax your head. Now let's do that one more time again. Breathing in and breathing in through the nose and breathing out on a hiss. Great. Now, these are breathing exercises that you can find out in more detail with my book, which is If You Can Speak, You Can Sing. Now, all of you will be able to get this book. On my website, I've also got exercises, which is CC Sammy Lightfoot. With, with the book, everyone at Speakers for Schools, they will have this sent to your school a one book, one to two books, that you'll be able to go into your library and borrow one of these books. I don't want you to have to buy it. I want you to go and get it for free because this is very important. It goes through all the exercises and it points out people who were your age when they were at school and things that they had to do. And like I said, on my website, which is www ccsammylightfoot.com, you will find it there. So that is the breathing exercise. Now we're going to do another exercise. I want you to say after me, go. Think of G-O-O, -O, go. But as you say the go, I want you to concentrate on the G, go. Good. Now, this does make sense. If you take your tongue for a minute, put it at the roof of your mouth behind your teeth. Now, that area is what we call the hard palate. Now, start to slide your tongue back and three quarters of the weight will get soft and jelly-like. So do that again. Take your tongue, put it at the roof of your mouth. Now, if you just feel it, it will just be like hard behind your teeth. Now slide it back three quarters of the way back. It will get soft and jelly-like. Now, how many of you feel that? Do you feel that, Jazz? Good. Now, it's very important for you to know that the front is the hard palate, the back is the soft palate. So as we are doing this exercise, that's my piano <laughs> in the background. And as you're doing the exercise, you will do now, as you're doing that, I'll make it higher. Now, I want you, as you're going up the scale, I want you to drop your jaw. So I will do it here for you to see. You'll see if you look at this area of my mouth, you will see when I'm dropping my jaw as I get higher. I'm pushing on the G, the consonant. Again, this book will talk all about it. With the consonant, it's very important because if you are singing, this exercise will really help with your projection. If you have a cold like I have right now, it's I'm singing through the, the mucus and the cold that I've got. And I'm still able to be articulate in what I am saying. And even if I want to sing. Ooh, 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 yeah, ooh, I'm 
able to do that because I'm singing through with the exercises. So let's do that all together now. So say go. Now say gi, think of G-E-E, -E, gi. And think of ne, like a baby. Ne, ne. So go, gi, ne. So here we go. carry on. Now I'm just showing you a little bit of these exercises but you will find on the websites and in the book you'll have time to really go through it and learn to do it yourself but I'm just showing you a little section of it. These exercises are so important for all of you the breathing and doing the googi ne exercise. Now, the reason for that, I bring it back to each and every one of you. The reason why this is important is it gives you the confidence. It gives you the knowledge of how to present yourself and it helps you with your dreams. I bring it back. I was 17 years old when I started working in the industry. Was it because I was extra special? No, not at all. It's because when I was 14 years old, I saw a man on television playing the piano and it inspired me to decide that I wanted to be in music and in television. But I understood because my mother told me, you can't just have the dream, you've got to work hard to pursue that dream. And that is what I did. Like I said to you when I started at the beginning, I was 17 years old and I was so nervous. I would not have thought that I would have been able to sing backing vocals for someone like Diana Ross, but I did. And I continued to study. In doing that, I then ended up becoming a vocal coach who worked with many singers right across, not just in the UK, but in Los Angeles. I ended up working on top television programs and I was able to become a business woman with all of that. Now, all of you that I'm speaking to, I know that there'll be great things that you would do if you choose to learn more about your voice. Learning about the dreams that you have requires, needs you to then take steps along the way. So I really want you, if there isn't anything that you remember that I have said, I want you to remember that phrase that I said right at the beginning. Anything is possible. And that means you. You are going to be able through these singing skills to accomplish many things because everything is about having that confidence. So doing the breathing exercises, the Breathing in and out helps you to relax. Then you move into the googi ne exercises, helps you again to be aware of what we call the hard palate at the front of the mouth and the soft palate. It's very important when you are speaking, singing, that you are aiming for the hard palate. Because if you aim towards the back where the soft palate is, it makes you a bit uncertain or people may not be able to hear you or if you're singing again the soft palate is good but that cannot be the foundation of your voice there is another skill with your singing the last one that i'd like you to do it's called the name me, 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 me. so if you do that with me me, 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 The key with this is as you get higher in the scale, don't try to get louder. What I want you to do is to think more 
of a baby. Think about it. When we were babies and we were crying, we would never lose our voice. Why is that? It's because we weren't overanalyzing. <coughs> and we'd be really high and going on forever. <laughs> So with these exercises, I want you to think more me. Think of it as an ugly sound. It's not meant to be a pretty sound when you're warming up your voice. It's meant to wake up your voice. So I want you to do the nay exercise with me. But as you get higher, think more of as if you're crying when you were a baby. So here we go. <laughs> This is another exercise that you will find on my website and in the book. These exercises, like I said, it will help in that confidence. It will help in waking up your voice. Another area that I will say to all of you, I said that that was the last one, but actually something else has come to me that I want you to know that all of your voices are different. And I want you to celebrate that. Some people has a voice that will be considered an alto, a deeper sounding voice. And then some people might have a voice that's up here in their high section. And that is beautiful as well. So I don't want you to feel that you have to have a certain type of voice to succeed. I bring it back, each of you, that phrase of anything is possible is for each and every one of you. The key is about spending the time to learn about your singing skill and being open like I was, where I started off in one area of the creative world and then I ended up doing other things. That way I was able to have a full career in the music and television world. And that can be any one of you too. So that's it for me for now. What I'd love to find out would be some questions and answers that you would have so that I can be very more specific of what you're doing. But like I said, I want to just repeat that. If you go onto my website, www.ccsammylightfoot.com, you will find free resources on there which are the exercises where it will cover the breathing, it will cover the googie me. And with this book, Speakers for Schools will send you a copy of it because I've got that and you don't have to pay for it. You will get it for free. It will be placed in the library at your school. And when you go through it, you will find case studies and just the power of what music is all about. Lovely. Thank you Thanks so much so for, uh, for your presentation. Um, it was really great to do those exercises along with you um, and hopefully our students enjoyed them as well. So we'll crack straight on with the interview questions and our first one comes from um, a sixth, the sixth form in Bolton and they have asked what advice do you normally give to singers who suffer from really bad stage fright and anxiety? Very, very good question. Now, the first thing I'll say is many well-known people have stage fright too. The only difference is they've learned to mask those, that, those nerves. So one of the ways are the breathing exercises that I mentioned earlier, doing those things, but there's another way of doing it as well. I would encourage you to set targets for yourself. So if you have a friend, why don't you set a date where you say, I'd like to do a performance for you. Then if you don't want to do that, you could do it where you record yourself, you take a phone or you take your computer and you put it on and you do a performance and you look back at it. It's about taking step by step so that you are able to overcome the stage fright. You know, I sh cannot give the name, but there's a very, very well-known artist and every time he would have to get on stage, he would be vomiting because he was that nervous. 
but none of the audience in the arenas where they would be performing, no one knew that this artist would be vomiting. He had such stage fright, and there are many other people who have had that. Another way of doing that is helping your stage fright is relaxing your shoulders. So there are a variety of things, but the biggest thing I would say to you as you're in sixth form is talk to a friend, ask one person or ask your parent, ask someone that you trust where you, you actually set a date and you say, I will perform on this date and you will feel nervous. You'll feel yourself shaking and, you know, in different places, you'll feel like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I'm like, Is my voice going to come out? But it's important that you do it. And then you set another date where you build and you build and you build because that is how you overcome the stage fight. Great tips there, definitely. I love that kind of relaxing the shoulders sort of thing. I'm sure that's very, um, you wouldn't even think about it when you're nervous, but a great little tip. Honestly, it's another exercise actually that would be really good is with your feet because no one can see your toes. If you have a, a, a shoe where it's all covered, <laughs> um, again, many well-known singers, that's what they will do. So they will have their, their nerves through the areas that are hidden. So it's helping. And as you're doing the exercises, again, it helps to keep you grounded. So again, I will say all of these practical exercises are so important. And remembering what I've said, well-known artists have stage fright too. The only difference is they've learned these exercises to mask it from the public. Wonderful. We have a question that's come from a student from St Edward's School. I'm going to apologise to them um, because we can't publish their question as their name uh, is in their question and we, we, we're not allowed to do that, I'm afraid. So sorry uh, to you, but we, we can't publish that as as um, if you would like to try and submit it anonymously, we can, but uh, we have your question. I'm going to ask it for you, but they keep uh, popping it in and I want to let them know why we, we can't share that. So that's just just so they're aware. Um, but they have pre-submitted a question and asked one now. They say that they really are enjoying this session, uh, that you have an amazing story and they found it very helpful. And their questions are around networking. So they have been uh, performing at their local uh, kind of um, venues and things like that. And they're really wanting to try and um, figure out how they can network themselves so the question is how did you manage to network when you were starting out and build those connections i love that question because it's actually very important networking is i will deliberately use the word it's crucial now the way to network there are several ways one is you have the ability now because of social media. And of course, this is according to your age, but the, the age group that you are in, you're able to do that. So I would say it's important to follow what positive people are doing. And that is one step. Another step of networking, which is very important, is actually for, as a singer, where you hear that there are shows that are happening that you where you can actually perform yourself and then speaking to different people who are putting on the show so again i do, where, where is this person based which is the territory which um so he didn't pre-submit that but i know what school they are at okay. so let me google that they're at st edward's school that's what their local school is so let me just pop that I don't know off the top of my head. Um, okay. well, what I would say, first of all, is to have di a direct conversation with your music, with you, the, the teacher who does the, um, who heads up the creative side and ask them directly. I would also say, you know, you can get things online where you can see there's something called the stage magazine where you can actually again you can go and they will have auditions when you it's it's going to audition after audition auditions i always say to people that is the best networking area i have met young singers that 
I would never have met if they didn't come to the audition. So these music competition shows, everyone thinks, oh, it's because you have to want to win. You don't have to think I'm going to win. But by going to the audition, you meet people like myself and we'll meet you. And a lot of us, believe it or not, <laughs> we're quite open to have these conversations with you. That's what the networking is all about. I have met actually <clears throat> in this book, there is an artist that I mention in the book and you see a picture and all of that. And that person I actually met at one of the music competitions where they auditioned. And the person and I, we just started talking and the person told me what they were wanting to do. They didn't win the music show, but again, they learned along the way. So networking is important, but it's much more simple to network than you probably realize because you have the power of the social media now where you can go in and follow people, you can send messages and very much go to audition, please. <laughs> We're getting lots of questions in, so really loving this. Thank you so much to I'll everyone who's submitting questions. So I can, because I know I talk forever more. <laughs> Um, so we have an anonymous school that has said um, that their students that are watching would love to know uh, the biggest crowd that you've sung in front of. Oh, very large. I've done arenas of like 20,000, uh, huge masses of people, masses, and I've loved it. And interestingly enough, it's not when you have a huge audience of 20,000 where you are as nervous as when you are with a hundred people <laughs> because you can actually see the hundred people whereas with 20,000 people or 30,000 you don't see them all because the lights don't cover don't, it just doesn't cover it so but yes I've in, in huge masses of people that I've performed in front of and I love it <laughs> I get nervous, like all of you but I've learned to overcome it Great. Right, our next question um, again has been submitted to us and it comes from Adafield School or sorry, Academy. And they have asked, how can we develop our upper range? Do you have any exercises to have a more more power in that upper range? That's very good. Again, those exercises are very important. I'll show you a perfect example where you start from the high note and going down the scale. You're going high into the, it's very much about the, the vocal technique exercises. Again, if you go on to my website, I answer some of these questions actually, and you can even try doing the exercises where like this, are vocal technique exercises that can seem quite boring if you're doing it constantly, but that is what will develop the high scale, the high notes, the middle notes, the middle scale <laughs> and the low notes. So I really encourage all of you, the key is taking the time to do these technique exercises. There is something called vocal technique, which is very different to vocal performance. But the vocal technique is the foundation for everyone, whereas the vocal performance can be changed according to what your genre of music is all about. Wonderful. Um, so our next question come from, comes from High Tunstall College of Science, and they have asked, um, do you need to have an agent in order to be a professional singer and get jobs? Yes and no. To start with, you absolutely do not need an agent. But as you get on in your career, then an agent is good because, so it really varies. Some people do well with agents and some people, like I said, they don't have agents, but they, they do well nonetheless. Um, so I will say, don't get too caught up in that. The main thing is about doing auditions so people can see you. It's also about, 
singing and putting it on your social media so people like myself can see you and also so that agents can see you. But don't get too caught up in I must have an agent because some people think that's what will make them well known. And there are many people who don't have agents, but they're doing quite well full time in the business. So it's not a yes or a no for that. Wonderful. Just to blow my um, sorry, sorry with this cold. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, we have time as well just for uh, maybe uh, two or three more questions uh, before we end today's session. So if you have anything, um, get your questions in. Our next question is going to be from Counts Thorpe Academy and they have asked, how do you think great musical tone is achieved? Ooh, again, very good question. I think, first of all, it's learning to love your voice because many people don't think about it that way. They can instead they compare themselves to other tones and think that's good. Learn to love your voice and in understanding your voice. The other area is getting an assessment. Now, getting an assessment will tell you where the break happens in your voice. So you will learn if whether you are primarily an alto, a tenor, a mezzo soprano, I mean, it's very important to understand the techniques of the voice. In then knowing that, you can then have specific exercises that would help to develop your sound. Whichever genre, whether it's theatrical, whether it's pop, whether it's rock pop, whatever, jazz, whatever style it is. So I bring it back. The technique, I know I keep saying it, but the technique exercises and having a vocal assessment is crucial for your voice. I hope that helps. It certainly does. Um, so we have um, a question that's come in anonymously um, and I feel like I know you've talked a little bit about kind of developing confidence and overcoming anxiety, um, but I think it's more kind of uh, tips and tricks. So do you have any sort of tips and tricks or anything about how did you develop your own confidence? We know you've touched on this a little bit, but do you have anything else to add? I do, I do <laughs> actually. One other step, well, there are quite a few steps. So one of them, like I said, is definitely the breathing. Another exercise is being aware of the hard palate and the soft palate. Another area is learning to, in, in having that sense of confidence, it's about putting yourself in situations where it's uncomfortable. Putting yourself in situations where you're learning to overcome the fear that you might have. And that would be as simple as walking down the street and looking at someone and just smiling at them or picking the phone up or speaking to a teacher, a friend that you've got and asking them about themselves. So again, you're not making it so inward, but you're looking outward to how other people are doing. And actually that helps in so many different areas. Does that help? I think that think certainly that's should do. So thank you. Um, so our next question, I think we have one more question after this, is from um, High Tunstall College of Science and they've asked, did you train in musical theatre and acting as well as voice or did you just focus on voice? I did actually. I um, studied all areas of the creative and again, I will encourage a lot of you to do that because that's how you discover yourself. So I have done the classical piano, that was my training at the London College of Music. But in addition to that, I did a course where it was about presenting your voice. And then I used to dance. I had dance lessons that I would go to because I loved dancing. <laughs> and in terms of the acting, I did a course in that too. And I was always over the top with my acting, always. My sister used to tease me. She'd be like, oh my gosh, you're so good with your singing, but you're acting, <laughs> you know? And I laugh about it to this day. So I would encourage a lot of you that it's important because you're so young. I know sometimes, you know, a lot of people your age or people in their early 20s would say the same, oh my gosh, yeah, you know, I'm getting older. And I'm like, not really, you're still so young. <laughs> so I would encourage 
encourage all of you that education in the creative world is very important. So don't put yourselves in a box. Don't just say I'm a singer and that's it. If you're a singer, that's wonderful, but learn about the acting, learn about the dancing, not saying that you have to be doing it yourself all of the time, but by doing it, it makes you aware of the creative world. Something as simple as going to the museum. There's a museum, it's called the v &A Museum, and I'm actual, I'm a patron at that museum. And the reason I love that place, and I would encourage all of you at your age to go there, is to visit it, is because it covers everything about the creative field. It doesn't only make you, you're a singer and that's it. If I was a singer and that was it, I would never have become a businesswoman, would I? And the reason why I was able to move from London to Los Angeles to do business all around the world, really, in many places, I think it's because I was very much encouraged by my teachers and by my mother not to put myself in a box. So I will say to all of you, yes, you might be at your strength if you're doing one thing like singing to do with the voice, but think of yourself as the creative journey. So you are creative. You might end up working in an area that may not seem like that, but it is nonetheless. Wonderful. And for our final question before we go to our closing comments today, comes from Dayfield Academy again, and they have asked, what has been your biggest obstacle that you've had to overcome in your career so far? Very good question. My biggest thing, situation, I will put it, was when I lost my voice and I lost the ability to speak. I had, and I mentioned a bit of it earlier, when I had my daughter, four months after, I had something that was called a brain aneurysm. And I won't go into what a brain aneurysm is, but basically I passed out and I was in effect, like in a coma. And when I woke up after two weeks, the doctor said to my family, if she wakes up out of this, she won't be able to walk and she won't be able to speak. And they were, the doctors were correct. When I came out of it, I could not do that. I could not walk, I could not talk as I'm talking to you now. However, these exercises that I've done with you, those are exercises that I started thinking about it because I could not speak and I couldn't, but I started using those exercises of the consonants, the vowels, k, k, t. I wanted to say, I want a cup of tea. I couldn't say anything like that. So k, t, m, g. And so I had to restart my ability to do this. That was the biggest issue that I had, but it actually made me stronger. I'm now able to speak again. It took me, it was a three month process to be recovered from that situation. It was a horrible situation, but it taught me that anything is possible. It taught me the importance of the vocal exercise, technique exercises that I have shared with you today. So I want all of you to remember what I've said. Anything is possible. All of you will be able to work in the creative world and make money from it if you wanted. I've done very well financially and I'm proud of it, but that didn't just happen. It was because I worked hard and I am still learning to this day. And that can be all of you that doing the same. Thank you for sharing uh, that with us. That was a really lovely question to finish on, I think. Um, such a, an amazing story to kind of push through and and you know so so inspirational so thank you for sharing that finally Pleasure. before we end today's session is there any final thing that you'd like to say all i can say is i really encourage you in your light in your school library you don't have to pay for it you will find this book if you can speak you can sing please borrow it and read it from your school and please come on to my website because there are lots of questions that i have on my website and that will teach you and again those are free resources that it's i'm very passionate about bestowing that and handing that over to all of you because you are the next generation and 
I'm very excited to see all that you will do.